welcome back to Creating with Grill Art. I'm excited to be teaching you today peeps. We're going to be painting on a canvas these cute little peeps. You know the peeps you find in the store that are covered with sugar and are just yummy marshmallow goodness. My kids love them, and that's what inspired me today. I wanted to just have something bright and cheerful for you to paint, and I'm looking forward to teaching you today. My name is Miss Tiffany. Let's talk about the supplies you're gonna need today. You're gonna need a canvas, and it is perfect for acrylic paint. We're gonna be using purple paint, blue paint, yellow paint, green paint and pink paint let's see those are gonna be our peeps that's gonna be our sky that's gonna be our grass and I'm just gonna pour it out in here probably don't need it all so I don't want it to waste so I'm gonna leave some of it in there and I can replenish my paint if I need to this is just acrylic paint. It's the inexpensive kind from uh, any craft store would have it. I've even seen them at the dollar store. This is a perfect beginner's paint. Let's see if we can get this out any time. Sometimes you gotta squeeze it a little bit. I'm gonna use my brush to help me out. And while we're looking at brushes, you're gonna need a brush. I like this round tip one. You know, I think the purple and the pink I might just leave in there and dip. But the other ones I definitely pouring out onto the plate because we're gonna be doing some mixture, mixtures with them. And I'm gonna be attaching a link below to um, this stencil to PDF file of our peeps. And it just makes it a little easier if you wanted to take it out and do some tracing. Uh, if you wanted to freehand it, which I highly encourage you to do, what I always tell people to do is to look at the shapes that you see in something that you're trying to draw. These are really simple shapes that we're seeing. You know, I'm seeing a uh, circle here, kind of an oval in there, rounded oval for the ears. And if you just do a light sketch mode, it makes it really easy. But I'm gonna use the stencil now and when you're doing the stencil, I always like to place the middle one since we're doing three bunnies. Let's look at the bunnies again. So we've got our three bunnies. This is a little smaller uh, painting, but it, you get the idea. I'm gonna start with our middle. And notice how I have some room there because we wanna be able to have some grass underneath it. So I'm gonna, you don't want it too high up though, okay? I would say that's about an inch and a half probably. So start off in the middle. I'm going to trace my bunny, the bunny peep. They have peep chickies. They have peep, even at Christmas time you can get peep snowmen. I've seen uh, peep Halloween ghosts. That's cute. But these little bunnies are perfect for spring. So I'm going to put another one right there. I want to kind of line up the bottom so it looks Looks like it's in the same spot. I'm just tracing it very, not too hard. I'm not pressing very hard. In case you make a mistake, you can easily erase it. There we go. The other one, I like to kind of space them so I'm looking, does that look like the same distance? And I think that one was a little closer. You don't want to do it off like too far apart to line them up, line the bottoms up as I place it on. Aren't they cute? You can name your peeps. So we'll have three peeps. What do you think you'll name them? I don't know what I would do. I only have two sons, so I can't name. I'd have, you know, a floating peep out there. Of course, I could name it after my dog. All right. Now I'm going to put our grass line. This is our horizon line. The horizon line is where the sky meets the land. And I'm just going to start a little higher up and I'm going to do an imaginary line across. Imaginary. Right there. 
notice that I did it higher up on the peeps. You don't want the peeps sitting uh, on the grass on top. You want them to kind of come down a little bit on the grass. And this helps give the illusion that there's distance behind them. And I, we're gonna be painting in the grass, but I wanted you to have a good point to stop with the blue. So let's get going with our painting. That's my favorite part. We got our brush here. I like to hold my brush kind of like a pencil. It depends on what type of things that I'm painting, but because I wanna have good control, I'm gonna hold it like a pencil. We're gonna start off with our background. I like to do that. And the way, easiest way I find is to start on one side of the canvas, work our way. And I like to press the paint and drag it. Do you see how I did that? You don't want to put too much paint on your brush because if you do, it'll bleed. So I usually just do a little bit. And I'm going to press it and drag it. And then what I'll do is I'll fill it in up and down all around it. If you press and drag next to a line, it really gets a crisp, very crisp line. It helps you get really close. So let's press it and drag it. See, I'm dragging it along. See how crisp that line is? If your line, like you accidentally paint into the peep, I wouldn't worry about it, not one bit, because we can paint over it. That's the beauty of acrylic paint, is it dries so fast, and if you, if you make a mistake, you can paint over it and fix it, no problem. So I'm just dragging around this bunny here and then I'm gonna fill in all of this and I'm just gonna keep working my way. I'm painting on a flat surface because it's just easier to teach you this way. But if, excuse me, if you have an easel, you can use an easel. Getting all this. Just picked a really pretty blue. Some people call this a Tiffany blue. And that seems appropriate because my name's Miss Tiffany. around our bunny's ears. All right, I'm gonna continue on painting all the way around and get the whole thing painted. Notice that I don't have any glops of paint. I'm definitely trying to spread all the paint around. You don't wanna see any like just lumps of paint. I'm gonna hold this up. See that lump? You don't want to see lumps like that. You want to spread that around. You also want to make sure you don't leave any white spots like that, okay? You want to get it all covered so that no white is showing. Now, if you want, you can pause my um, video here now and get caught up on your background. And when you come back, I'm going to have it all caught up to start the next Okay, I got all caught up with painting this. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go blow dry it. I wanna take a blow dryer and get it all dry. So you definitely need to ask permission if you can use your parents' blow dryer and get it dry. If you don't have a blow dryer or if they won't let you use one, it's no problem. Just blow on it for a little bit. Sometimes you can pick it up and wave it a little bit. You just wanna get it dry so that when we start painting our bunnies, that this blue doesn't get wet and mess up our bunnies. So I'm gonna let you pause it again, go dry it. Hi, welcome back. So you've got your background all dry. Let's start painting our bunnies, our peeps. I think the first thing I wanna start is with my center bunny. I don't know why, I just like to start in the middle. And I'm going to use yellow. We wanna press and drag just like we did on the outside it also will help give a nice crisp line. So I'm loading up my paint, pressing, and dragging. Then I'll go back the other way, back and forth, fill it in. 
you don't want to put too much paint on. It's a really fine line because I've seen kids and adults load too much paint on and then they just got gobs and it takes forever to dry. And then I've seen people not put enough that when they spread their brush around like this, that they start to see white. And you don't want to see, if you see white while you're brushing it, you got to add paint. This all covered up. Do another little drag right here. Last little cheek. So cute. Makes me hungry for a peep. All right. Okay. I got that first middle one done. Now I'm going to paint. Let's see. I'm going to paint pink. You want to make sure your brush is really clean. I think it's important to uh, tap your brush at the bottom of your bowl at least 10 times and then wipe it on a paper towel just to make sure that you've got it all off that yellow. So I'm going to drag this around here. Same thing, just filling it in. Are some of my favorite colors pink and yellow and blue. I love using these colors. All right, I'm going to drag it around the ears. Okay, I'm already thinking what am I going to name my little peeps? right now let's see there I might come over and do another little coat in a second again on that pink one but for now I think it looks good I'm cleaning my brush tapping ten times then I'm wiping it and now I'm gonna do take the purple Same thing. Drag. You guys are going to be expert uh, painters when you drag it around the line here. It's a hard technique for a lot of people to get. Once you do it and you understand that if you just press your brush and drag along, it gets pretty easy. I do think we might have to do two coats on these. I don't want to see the brush strokes. The yellow, we don't see the brush strokes as much, but we do see it with this purple one and the pink one. So I'm going to finish this up and then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to blow dry my bunnies and I'm going to apply a second coat to my pink and my purple. So I want you guys to do that too. You can pause me and then go blow dry them and then put another coat on the pink and the purple. If your yellow looks pretty good that you don't see brush strokes and it's covered nicely like mine is, you don't have to do another coat. But I definitely think you're going to need one on the pink and the purple. So I'm going to stop and fast forward to that. I am back. I blew dry it. Then I did a second coat on the pink and a second coat on the purple. See how you don't see the brush strokes quite as much as it was uh, showing before. And then I blue dry it again. So it's all ready to start the grass. And the grass is really fun. I like to kind of paint in just that underlying base coat of green. Oh, I've got green on my plate right there. And I'm gonna mix a little yellow over here next to the green and a little, kind of a much bigger dollop. See how that's bigger than the yellow? And that's gonna give us a different tone of green. The tone is when you make it a little lighter. See, when you make it lighter. And I think I want a little 
more. Notice that I'm also dipping on the side of my paint when I grab more color. You don't want to dip right in the middle of it because then it'll ruin all my yellow. So I have a really pretty color right there of green. And I'm going to just paint it on pretty quick back and forth. And when you go around the bunnies, do it the same way I've been teaching you. Redrag it, okay? Now, while it's still wet, this is when the magic happens. See, can you see it? Yeah. This is where the magic happens. I want to come in and I want to do some grass growing up. You could leave it just like this, but we want to show texture and movement in our painting. And by doing that, think about grass when you're outside playing in grass. It's not all one perfect cut unless it just got mowed, but even then, little strays of grass poke up higher than the others. They also grow in different directions and there's multiple colors usually. So we're gonna do the same. I think I'm going to make another shade of green by adding some more yellow. I want it real light, this one to be really light. Notice that I didn't go into that pile. I started a new pile and it's definitely different. Now what I like to do is, sometimes I'll hold my brush kind of far back because we want looser strokes, okay? Very loose and gentle, going up all different directions. Even growing on, like, on, on top of the bunnies. Sorry, I couldn't get that word out. Different ways too. See how I'm going different ways? I seen some kids, they try to do it all these little perfect ones just like that, but no, we want them just growing all different ways. And we're gonna put lots of layers running out of that paint. I might have to mix some more. You want some taller than the other. And the other thing I didn't mention, which is the most important thing of painting grass, is you always want to paint in the direction it grows. So paint grows up, right? We're not going to start here and go down. I always like to press press my brush and then kind of flick it up. Do some long ones. They're kind of growing on our bunnies. And then you know what else? We've got some really dark now I'm not cleaning my brush at all. I am wiping it a little bit to get some of that excess. We've got some dark green, that first green. And I think it'll be fun to add some dark green. Look at that. Now we're just adding a lot of texture. And you can overlap it. Definitely want to overlap it. See how I'm just working it? Different directions. I think it looks so cool. All right, let's see. That's looking good. What do you guys think? Thinking I'm doing good? I bet you are doing awesome. I feel good about that. Might even come in with a little bit of yellow and I'm double dipping that yellow into that lightest green just so I can have some really light grass in there. And by putting all different color grass in there, different shades, different tones, it really um, makes it look like it's got texture and that it's really sitting in there in the grass. Okay. So now what you can do if these are dry, okay, you can come in with a Sharpie and put on the face. But I want you to remember, this is your painting. This is your artwork. And if you wanna do something different, 
you can absolutely do something different. I know if we were sitting in class, I'd have kids that say, can I do cutie eyes? Can I do eyelashes? Can I do, you know, closed eyes? You can do whatever you want because this is your artwork. You wanna put a bow tie, you wanna put a hat, you go right ahead. This is, this is supposed to be fun for you and you are supposed to experiment and use your imagination. You don't have to do it exactly like my peeps. Okay, so go ahead and do whatever you want. I'm gonna pause it here, or you should pause it here, I should say, and I'm gonna dry my grass. And then I'm gonna come back and show you how to finish it off with the jelly beans, okay? Okay, welcome back. I'm gonna put a few little hiding jelly beans, and jelly beans are just almost like a little oval, just like that. I chose the pink because I thought it was really bright, but I'll probably put a couple purple ones too. They're just hiding all around. You guys like jelly beans? Tell you what, I love, love jelly beans. That's a dangerous thing to be in my household. There's some purples. And I have them going different directions if you notice. They're kind of going one this way and then the other's going the other way. All right, I feel good about that. Now I'm gonna put my eyes. Little nose. Little peeps. They just have these little, little dots. Very simple. But I do love the little eyelashes when they're closed. So I'll do that on this one. All right. What shall I do on this one? I had this one wink. This one's winking because it's cute and I love it. Now, I always like to finish off with something really fun um, and I like to do a little splatter. So I'm gonna show you how to do the splatter, okay? Basically, I've got my brush, I put it in the water, it's nice and clean, and then I'm gonna dry it, but it's gonna be a little wet. It's still a little wet to the touch. I didn't dry it real good. And I'm gonna dip it in the pink. And then what I like to do is take another object, in this case it's the Sharpie, and I just tap it. And this is just a fun, you don't have to do this. I just happen to really like splatter. And I don't care if it gets all over the place. I like it. Do some yellow splatter. Ooh, I like it. I like art splatter. Now, if you're lucky enough to have some glitter at home, you can glitter your peeps. That'd be cute. That's a lot of splatter, and you know what? I love it. And the last thing I'm going to do, dry my brush really good, because I don't want it wet. I'm gonna pick a bright color to do my initials. Your initials are your first letter in your name in your first name and the first letter in your last name. So it's hard to tell, but mine's a T and then I did a B kind of attached to it. And that is the end of our art project. What do you guys think? I know yours came out amazing and I want you to definitely find me on Instagram and tag me. Tag me so I can see how cute your bunnies came out. Hashtag me, Gorilla Art Studio or hashtag Gorilla Art. Ooh, how about hashtag me Gorilla Art Peeps. I'd love to see those. I can't wait to see you in the next project. I dare you to be creative today.